Hey everyone, we're back. I hope you can hear me. My microphone's a little, a little messed up here, but um, in fixing it, they mangled it. But anyway, we're live in Austin at the Linux Foundation Open Source Security Summit. I am joined by David A. Wheeler, not to be confused with any of the other many David Wheelers <laughs> out there. But um, David, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. So. Well, I'm not going to introduce you. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. I've given them your name, but tell, tell our audience, who, who's David A. Wheeler? Okay, well, um, many ways to answer that one, but I guess what you're probably looking for... It's a family is, show. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> so, uh, I work for the Linux Foundation, uh -huh. and my title tells me that I'm the Director of Open Source Supply Chain Security. And what the heck does that mean? Quickly, it's, I'm a subject matter expert. I go around to the various foundations within the Linux Foundation, uh, and really in some cases with, with other foundations and projects as well, trying to help improve the security of open source software, which we all depend on all around the world. Got it. And I should say, it's, I mean, soup to nuts, anywhere from it's in the developer's head, getting into version control, built, uh, turned into a package, just all the way to op operations. Absolutely. So look, as I was kidding around before we went live, we've had no shortage of open source security, not open source security, supply chain security mm -hmm. uh, discussions in the last two days. It, it, it is the top of the line here. And, and quite frankly, we were at RSA conference two weeks ago doing mm -hmm. similar interviews on Broadcast Alley. And, and software supply chain security was top top of mind there as well. Mm -hmm. Sensibly so. Yeah, I put on the uh, Mark Miller and I put on the DevSecOps event every year at RSA mm -hmm. at Moscone and, and not surprisingly, open source supply, uh, not open source, supply chain security was top there. Mm -hmm. Just ran in on my way before sitting back down here to the men's room, I ran into Alan Friedman. Mm -hmm. Yes, who, he's here. He's, he's the yes bomb man, Mr. Right? S bomb, yes. Mr. Indeed. S bomb. <laughs> and um, so all, all good. It's certainly a very relevant topic. So I got to ask you an honest question. How long have you had this title? Uh, well, I only joined the Linux Foundation in 2020, April 2020. And so. have you been su supply chain security? That, well, that's been my title since I joined. In 2020, was Absolutely. it after Solar Winds? No, that was before Solar Winds. In fact, I wrote an essay about Solar Winds as a Linux Foundation employee. Well, that was pretty pre-essent <laughs> then. Uh, well, you know what? I don't. I realize some people are surprised, and you know, where's the supply chain coming from? But you know, all you have to do is look at some of the numbers. Um, there are several studies that look at just open source, mm -hmm. and they're finding anywhere from 70 to 90 percent of the components within an application are actually open source. Right. It's not including any proprietary software they're reusing. So I, I've been around the software industry for a while. There was a time when software was pretty much, you developed the entire scratch. application from scratch all Be by spoke. itself. That's right. And, and the big concern then was, how do we enable reuse? How can we make it so that we don't have to rewrite? Write well, it once. Write it. We you know, write something once and reuse it. And the good news is we have solved that problem. But uh, like the any, bad news is <laughs> the bad news is yeah, the bad news is fundamentally is that the causes of today's problems are often yesterday's Rooted solutions. In yesterday's <laughs> solutions. Yeah. And so that's very much. So what we're seeing is we have now mostly solved the reuse problem. But now we have to deal with the, because software is mostly other software, we now need to deal with that other software as a potential source of, of defects in general, including security problems. So, you know, David, I, I've been in security 20, almost 25 years. And I have uh, been in tech 30 years. You know, one, I, and I started DevOps.com right back in mm -hmm. 2014. One of the reasons was because I thought it was a great thing for security. Mm -hmm. But I will say that supply chain security, software supply chain security, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have that had it not been for DevOps. Because I think we've always had, and I'll explain to you what I mean so you don't think. Okay, I'm I, I, okay, go on. I think we've always had to worry about what is the security posture of any components or scripts or artifacts or mm -hmm. whatever we're using in our mm -hmm. software. But one of the unique or one of the great contributions to software 
and, and the way we do technology today that DevOps has made has been the introduction of sort of lean IT, lean manufacturing concepts into building software. And, it, and it's, it's not the only thing, but it's resulted, one of the things that has contributed towards resulting in this idea of a software factory. Mm -hmm. Right, we didn't think of software factories before, even though. Oh yes, we did. The University of Maryland had such programs, I think, in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, th that concept's been around for a while. But Turn that wasn't phrase. commercial. No. Like when we talked about people developing software, it was very much a custom. Right. Developers, they, they, you know, they started with a. I'll never forget my, one of the first companies I started. We go in to meet with Time Warner. And they wanted a, uh, it was a customer service app for their cable customers or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, well, well, they asked my partner, well, what IDE do you use? What IDE do you use? What, sure. you know, all the people, this one used Borland, this one used the semantic one. And my, my partner, who was a stone cold coder, said, well, I use VI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he just, he de developed in VI. So everybody in those days, I mean, that's, that's how software was done. Mm -hmm. Now, today we really do, for the first time on a commercially scalable scale, have this concept of software factories where software moves along a pipeline. Right. Right? right. I mean, the, the, the whole idea of a CI pipeline isn't really new. It's just finally, it's, it's become it's, widely adopted. Right. That's, now, I would that's argue that's much. not the problem. That's part of a solution. The, the, the supply chain problem, it, I would argue, fundamentally comes down to You've got all these reused components that enables you to not have to rebuild everything from scratch, but now you're dependent on all those tiers and tiers and you know all those those, those you know the software that it depends on and the software that depends on and so on. But things like CI pipelines can help us address. But again, let's go back the to the factory piece. Yes. What made that assembly line work is mm -hmm. the Model T, every gear shift on the Model T was the same ball with the same threads. Mm -hmm. So I could, I could sit here and just screw balls on stick shifts all day, right? Yeah. And, and that's how an assembly line and factory worked. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, whether it was third party products that were putting in cars or building appliances or whatever you build on your pipeline assembly right. line um you can't have too much customization if you're going to do that at scale you had to have that you you had to agree on some things we just have to make sure you agree on the right things so for yeah. example um i think m vast numbers you mentioned ides i think nowadays most we don't care what ide you use no no one cares why, why care that what was we a long, about, well borland's not here anymore uh, but that's, all <laughs> that's a different yeah. Yeah. But, you know basically focusing on figure first figure out what matters that's always an easier thing mm -hmm. to see after the fact it's much harder to figure it out when you're in the midst of the problem mm -hmm. and then okay this is the part we need to agree on and i'm coming back to the ci pipelines you know after i make a proposed change making it go through stages and doing automated tests, running various kinds of scanners to look for various kinds of potential problems so that by the time you bring it in, you have very high confidence the that the result is. Is, going to be, is going to be better than what you had before. Yep, but you know, so there was an argument, I forgot what presidential election it was already, but you know, cars made in America and cars assembled in America. Yes, which are parts, different. <laughs> right. Parts made in Mexico or right. wherever. Sure. Today, I think our software is like that. They oh, may, yeah, it may be assembled by any software, you know, whoever vendor is doing that, but the parts are made all over the place. It's frankly, in many ways, even more than the rest of the physical world, because at least in the physical world, there's a cost of physical movement, right. whereas the bits are essentially free to copy around. Exactly. So, so yes, the world of software development is internationalized. It has been for a while. It's just that some policymakers haven't noticed Yeah, that. no, but now we, but the other thing that's given rise to is the repos. And I don't mean repo cards, right? Yes, yes. I mean the, re the repositories of right. these software. We're talking about GitHub and GitLab and the, those kinds of facilities. Yes? Well... GitHub certainly, but Git in general. The okay, we get the version control system. Yes. Of 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 yes. We are we we are 
storing reusable code. And in some cases, like you look at the Docker right. uh, repos and you look at an Artifactory or the uh, ne Nessus ones from Sunset. We are storing reusable components that you could be sitting, whether you're sitting here with me or in Ukraine, mm -hmm. right? You could pull it down and assemble, right? And that is, that's power. That's, look, it's been a, uh, an igniter for all kinds of software development. Mm -hmm. It's also been a security. And, you know, it's been a bit of a security issue because now we're, we're pulling down. What version are you pulling down? Right. And are you updating because there's a vulnerability found in that version? Are you keeping things exactly. up to date? So, I mean, I think we both agree on that. Here's my take. Mm -hmm. I always thought that the choke point, if we can use that word, would be at those repos. Because that's where people are getting these reusable components. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't a repo have a a toll gate or a, a nets bomb checker or something, whatever you want to call it, right. that says, oh, wait, David, you, you're pulling down the old version of this. Yep. You need the new version. It, to be fair, the, the people are actually working on those sorts of things. The OpenSSF has something called package ana ana analysis. Yes, I actually they just spoke to oh, Caleb okay. about it. Great, great. So, you know, there are some efforts to do that. Um, and I think in many cases, it's not so much the repo as the package manager, you know, making it easy to say, hey, wait a minute, that's a vulnerable version, you know, please update. Uh, there is, and, we, and by the way, the OpenSSF has a number of working groups, and the newest one is specifically for the folks who manage repositories. I think and, that's, um, that's where we got to be. Yeah, and, you know, the, the package repositories and the package managers. And, um, I mean, they're just starting, but already I, 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 have, I think there's, there's great promise. The, the challenge that they have is scale, though. Um, in particular, a lot of people, you know, why don't you just tech, detect all malicious software? Good luck. Wow. You know, there, there, are, there are tools we can use to detect them in some cases. It, can that be helpful? Yes. That better not be your only mechanism that exists. No. And frankly, the big, one of the biggest problems now, because most software is actually the software you bring in, one of the biggest problems now is old, out of date software that's that needs known to be, to be vulnerable that needs to be updated. If you're that's already, already out there, by the way. Oh, yeah. And, and the good news is that there are tools to help you identify, tools to help you update, but people have to basically... Probably need to automate it. Is the, oh, and, and in fact, the a lot of the automation is there. A, you know a thing, I, a lesson I learned in security too over the last 25 years? Mm -hmm. People talk automation, they get scared when it comes time to automate because they're afraid they're going to break something else with by doing it automatically. This is where the CI pipelines come in. Yeah. They, but fundamentally, you know, I, I tell people... You know, there's some really excellent academic research about software testing and that sort of thing. But you know what? You can make this much simpler. How, how you, you need automated tests. How many tests do you need? You need to have tests to be confident that what you release is going to be okay to use. If your te automated tests aren't good enough, then if your automated tests can't do that, then they're not you good enough. You got a problem. You right. got a problem. Once your automated tests are good enough, now you can do things like fearlessly upgrade to a newer package because... I ran my tests. Everything works. Yeah, but my what about the dependency happy. of that software on other software? Same, same thing. You're, you know, as those get updated, you immediately notice to, does it work software. or not. Right. And and so and so this this combination, well, basically CI pipelines, including automated tests, various tools to analyze the software, looking for vulnerabilities, looking for issues. Um, it's 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 very simple. It's not complex, but it's powerful. Yeah, there's no no doubt about it. Um, I, I had something, and I, I went through right out of my mind. It's terrible okay. getting old. But, you know, back to the, the, this whole concept of that with software supply chain. Look, Mark Miller was at Sonatype, right? Mm -hmm. When, when Struts 2, uh, was it Equifax, right? Mm -hmm. Came out. And what was an interesting thing is him and Derek Weeks, who was at Sonatype at the time, too, they did a survey and some research like six to eight months after Equifax. Yeah. So we already, everyone yeah. who was top of the news charts. Right. People are still downloading and using the old version right. of Struts 2 
in their packages instead of the new version. Right, and, and there's been a lot of discussion about how do you deal with that. You don't want to break somebody's system, and, and yet this is a real problem for a lot of folks. So um, there are various discussions about how to deal with this, anywhere from maybe slowing down those, those bad downloads. You know, so to give a hint without really breaking right. someone's system. But there's, there's various ideas, but you know, it's, it's a real issue. Uh, right now, I think the goal is to just try to make it easier and easier and easier to do the right thing. We want to try to make the default the right thing. And then if we truly, you know, for the true stragglers, we're going to need to find other approaches. But let's make it really easy so to do that. you got to use a little first. carrot and a little stick is what I'm hearing. In some sense. Yeah. I mean, you can call making it easy a carrot. But I think fundamentally, generally people do what is the easy thing to do. They, so if we the make the right resistance. thing the easy. That's right. We make the right thing the easy thing. Um, we don't have to worry so much about the sticks. Yep. All right. So, David, this is all. We've set the table. We used our whole 15 minutes, but we've set the table. Let me go now to the next part. You're the first person we've had on from around open source security that actually is a Linux Foundation employee. Uh-oh. So I got to ask you the question. Beyond giving the open SSF a home, mm -hmm. Right? You were doing this before there was open SSF. Yes. What is the role of the Linux Foundation in your mind in, okay. in making open source security, open source software more secure? Well, actually, let me step back further because there's the question of what is the purpose of the Linux Foundation? Yeah, absolutely. You put the period Let's right go there. there. Right. And, and then because, and then we'll take part because two. in fact, I think the security question follows. Yep. I mean, the fundamental goal of the Linux Foundation and really any good open source software foundation is to enable collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, there's all sorts of legal wickets that you can get in trouble with. There's there are many things that, you, that a, a project often needs beyond just, hey, I need a repo uh, with version control. And so a lot of organizations have decided that it's a lot easier to, to get things done, to get collaboration done, if they can create a project within a foundation. Um, there are some organizations that you know create foundations specifically for a particular project. I mean, the Python Software Foundation, you know, it's focused on Python. Absolutely. And there's many other foundations. The Linux Foundation is basically a foundation that creates foundations. So we create foundations to quickly get going. And why do we create foundations, or and more specifically, why create projects? And the answer is to solve a problem. Yep. So that now, so that's the general. Now, the more specific, what about security? Same kind of thing. Don't we, we need to make things more secure and specifically open source software more secure? Oh, how do we do that? Collab. We want to do collaboration to, because it's too hard for any one organization to do it themselves. Oh, that makes sense for the Linux Foundation to do because as soon as you say we want to enable collaboration to solve a problem, that's, that's what the, the Linux Foundation, foundation is right. for. And really, I would say any foundation. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I work for the Linux Foundation. I, I like them. Yeah. Uh, but it's good you do. It's good I do. I guess. <laughs> yeah. But you know, but, but it really, um, you know, I work for the Linux Foundation. But it, really, that should be the job of any foundation is trying to help enable collaboration in terms of the open source software foundation. And in this particular issue, though. I um, mean, the Linux Foundation is one of the largest, maybe the largest uh, open source software foundation, and it just kind of made sense for the many, many, many people that have to deal with security, because this is, this is truly a, an industry-wide issue, so it made sense to put this in the Linux Foundation to work on industry-wide solutions. I love it. I love it. Hey, man, we're over time. Okay. Um, Can I make a couple of quick points? Go. All right. So... Um, I just, you know, before we, we head off, I would love to encourage anybody who sees this thing. Um, talk to them. Talk to them. Okay. Hello, them. Okay. Uh, so if you develop open source software, I would love for you to take advantage of some of the stuff that we've already developed within the Linux Foundation and especially the Open SSF. So there is a free course on how to develop secure software. If you haven't taken a course, take that course. Um, we have all sorts of guidance on best practices on how to develop secure software more securely. Um, you know, best practices badge. There's a scorecard to evaluate projects. There's something called Salsa to help identify some key requirements for the supply chain and you know, build. And, and so we've got some good stuff. Take a look. I think you, you, you know, your users will be grateful. <laughs> Absolutely. Anything else? I'm sure there is, but we're out of time. <laughs> All right. Hey, look, you're invited back anytime you want. Oh, thank you. David A. Wheeler, Linux Foundation, <laughs> open source 
software supply chain security director. <laughs> I, I got a little out of order, but I think I got all the words in there. 